Hi there. So recently I've been doing quite a lot of life drawing, doing quick sketches and just general sort of practice. And a lot of those drawings I don't tend to take on to finished pieces, they're just done as um, practice and uh, you know keeping your hand in in terms of doing some drawing. And uh, what I thought I would try and do today is to take one of those drawings and uh, see if I can work on it a little bit more. So what we're going to look at is first of all the work that was done during a life drawing session, just looking at the, the sketches and the uh, initial work that I did. Then we'll pick one of the drawings that we want to work on a little bit more. Then I'll show you how we uh, create a colour palette for it uh, and then work on it at a uh, higher resolution and make more of a finished piece from it. My name is Pete. Welcome to Basement Picasso. So during this session, uh, I think I did uh, six or seven different poses. Um, each of these were in the region of sort of uh, 10 to 15 minutes with a couple of uh, slightly longer ones at the end of probably more like about sort of 20 minutes so I could do some painting. So this was done from a, a Zoom session uh, working with a, a model uh, and uh, each of these drawings um, I was really just looking to try and capture uh, a little bit of the pose, get a little bit of the light and shadow. Um, there was quite a nice uh, natural light coming in from the, the left hand side. So that was given a, in, in some of the poses quite a good sort of sense of the, the shape and the, the shadow. So for these these kind of sketches uh, I'm really just trying to, to get a, a sense of the, the general pose look at the, uh, the general sort of structure, uh, the composition, the light and shadow uh, and then just get a little bit of the texture. So you can see the, the sort of marks that I tend to, to make with the uh, using sort of text and random shapes. Things that just give uh, a little bit of interest to the, the overall uh, drawing. You'll see in most of these, I, I tend to start in the background with uh, just a, a sort of little bit of pencil style toning. Uh, that's a particular uh, brush that I've made within Rebel, which is really good at, at putting down kind of fast washes of sort of pencil tone uh, that you can then uh, work into and, and add on or, or rub out to, to be able to, to do a kind of negative uh, shapes drawing so you can find the light areas within the, the dark uh, I find that a sort of better background to work on than uh, just the, the plain canvas because you can then start uh, drawing and erasing uh, at the same time. So uh, these, these are uh, fairly quick sketches. I'm trying to get uh, as, as much of the kind of figure and composition in. I'm not focusing on uh, a really accurate drawing and measuring because there's, there's just not enough time to, to really be able to get um, that, that level of, of accuracy within these uh, types of drawings. It's, it's much more about the feel of the drawing and just getting the sense of the, the figure, the, the sense of the shapes and the most importantly the sense of the, the light, so the, uh, the light areas and the, the dark shadows. Uh, and you'll see in, in some of these uh, later on, particularly in the paintings, I'll do a little bit more with sort of um, washes of colour and uh, various things to uh, and try and get some interest in those sorts of uh, dark shadow shapes. So again, sort of pencil washes just to, to get a little bit of tone down. You can see you can start sort of rubbing into that. Uh, at this one I'm sort of feeling around for the, the drawing a little bit more, looking for the, the shape 
uh, and just sort of positioning things, finding uh, sort of angles of really nice sort of uh, reclining uh, pose, and, and just the, the, the sort of angle of the, the torso in this one was uh, just a, a really really nice uh, shape. Um, and then starting to, to block out the uh, the darker areas, looking at the the contrast. You can also see that uh, quite often I sort of adjust the uh, the image, so you can see where it's sort of blocked and originally started drawing, and then I've moved the, the figure across uh, a little bit to uh, get better composition to make sure things fit in. So one of the advantages of digital tools, very easy to, to move those sorts of things around. Uh, and not much detail, you can see the hand, just very, very rough sort of indications of the, the shapes to, to give a sense of it. So then we went on to do, uh, I think it was three uh, slightly longer uh, sort of paintings. So the first thing I did was uh, just create a little bit of a background for the paintings. I used uh, just a, a, a darker colour, put a few very subtle kind of brush marks and uh, colours, some warms and cools. Uh, and then what I was experimenting with was using the sort of washes of colours to randomly sort of block in the, the dark shapes uh, and then uh, give me something that I could kind of paint uh, lighter areas into. Um, and this was uh, something I was really uh, experimenting with. You'll see in some of these uh, actually start painting even while the, the water is still running so some of the, the paint marks that I put down they, they start running as well um, and it's all just about getting a little bit of uh, randomness and, and interest and uh, some mark making uh, as, as that kind of builds forward and uh, you know these, these are very quick sort of loose studies so you know I'm not wanting to, to get caught up in lots of detail. Uh, what I'm really looking to do is just get a sense of the figure, sense of the uh, the colours, the, the light, uh, and uh, just get a little bit of interest and texture and marks out of it. So same thing again, start with a few washes, just letting those uh, run and drip, but they give a general sense of some of the, the darker areas and the, the shadows. Uh, and then gives me something to, to start to build the light into. Uh, and again, you'll see uh, with these that I, I tend to sort of just block things in. I'm not really starting by trying to accurately draw things out. I'm not kind of drawing shapes and edges. We'll just sort of put down a general sort of colour first. Uh, and then once I've got something in terms of an initial kind of placement, then I'll go back and do uh, a little bit of line work and, uh, and start to pull out the drawing and the, the shape from that. Um, and at that point you can, uh, you know, you really uh, adjust things, you're not committed to those initial marks, you're really just looking at uh, refining things and uh, those those initial colours help to, to play against each other and as they mix together you get interesting uh, new colours that you can use and uh, things so before a lot of the time I'll start off with uh, some initial colours but then the painting itself becomes the colour palette and uh, you try and leverage uh, more and more of that uh, as the, the painting goes forward. So a little bit of uh, sort of marks. I've got my brushes that introduced a little bit of text and things that just give us sort of random shapes. So all about just trying to make interesting marks rather than getting too precious about trying to, to draw or paint accurately. Uh, and the last one, uh, again, uh, same sort of thing, starting with some dark washes and you can see they're still running down the screen uh, and as I'm painting in with uh, some of the uh, other oil paints and uh, the different brushes um, and it all just contributes to, to making a very interesting natural uh, 
looking uh, marks and the, the way that the uh, sort of watercolours uh, run down and interact with the texture and the canvas and so on looks uh, it's really good. So this was the, the last one that uh, I did during this session. You can see I'm going back in, just darkening it up again. Uh, I've been just trying to work on the contrast. We've got a really nice sense of light uh, across the, the figure and some really nice uh, dark shadows that uh, that particular pose, just the way the, the light, the sort of sunlight was coming in, made a really sort of strong contrast in the image, which was, uh, was really good. Uh, in terms of a, a, a picture to uh, work on, we'll probably look at this one as the, the pose to build on. Okay, so I've decided which of the images I want to work with. It was the last one uh, that I was doing and what I'm going to do is, uh, so first of all I brought that in as a reference picture and I'm going to uh, first of all create a colour palette from the, uh, the sketch that I produced. So uh, we'll create a colour palette and then I'm going to bring the sketch in. I'm also going to bring the reference picture in and I'm going to sort of combine the two uh, so I'll be able to do a little bit of sketching from the, the reference image but then use my uh, original uh, sketch as part of the, the background. So uh, let's uh, work through that. So the first thing is to make a colour palette from the painting that I did. So I'm going to uh, create a colour set from the image file and I'm just going to use nine colours for this. Uh, that will open up the, uh, the file browser to be able to pick the image. These were all the sketches uh, that I did uh, and this was the, uh, the final one that we're going to work from. So I'll open that up uh, and you can see that that gives me a small selection of colours that I can now use uh, as part of that image. The next thing I'm going to do is to uh, bring in that original painting and we'll drop that in uh, just as a new layer and then we'll resize that. If you hold shift while you're dragging a corner, it keeps the aspect ratio, so I can drag that out uh, to the right size. And what that does is uh, it gives me the, the kind of the base colours and the uh, sort of original sketch, but I'm not going to hold to this, I'm going to uh, adjust it and also work from the, the reference uh, photo. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do uh, is actually just uh, loosen up the image with uh, a little bit of uh, blending. So now what I'm going to do is bring in the uh, reference image. And I'm going to 
work to position that again using the shift and drag to be able to scale it. What I'm just working through here is really just refining the composition. So what I liked about the original sketch was that the, the figure was actually slightly cropped um, which uh, gave us some nice shapes towards the, the edge. And just in terms of general positioning, just thinking of sort of the rule of thirds and just generally where some of the shapes are sitting. So trying to get that uh, positioned nicely. I quite like that the, the hand is also cropped because it, it just gives uh, a little bit of structure uh, for the, the sort of shapes uh, around the edges. So positionally I think that's uh, that's quite a good composition, that's what I want to, to try and work with so uh, I'm going to go with that. So we'll okay that and what I'm going to do is usually uh, if I'm starting this from uh, the beginning um, I wouldn't have the, the reference image, I wouldn't have that sort of starting drawing and I would just start very loosely in and block in all those sorts of uh, colours. But because I've got the, the initial sketch that, that's effectively a sort of uh, very loose uh, underpainting that we'll be able to leverage. Uh, but I'm not going to uh, use that in terms of the sort of shape positions, we'll use the, the reference photo now. Um, so. I'll also have draw and sketch in based around this and then there's going to be uh, lots of adjustments as we start to uh, bring the, the colours together. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a new layer above that uh, and then uh, do some uh, sketching just to uh, bring in very, just very rough shapes uh, to begin with. that I'm using to do the kind of pencil sketch and this is one that I made which has a, it sort of works a bit like a pencil but it does these sort of random uh, sort of sketch lines that sort of run in parallel with it so it gives you quite a nice interesting little um, sort of sketchiness to uh, the work that you're doing and it's quite good to, to stop you getting too uh, overly precise trying to draw every kind of little edge and every little uh, detail So if we have a look at that, switch off the other layers, that gives us a, a reasonable sort of starting uh, outline and sketch. Uh, and then if we bring in the underpainting, we can see that uh, where things were originally isn't sort of really lining up, but there's lots of colours and, and it's now a case of using those underlying colours and uh, as we paint into that, they'll sort of blend together and we start to, to get a, a mixture of these uh, two working together. So now it's just a, a case of really uh, getting back to the the painting. 
um, the lines, I, I quite often show how I, I sort of draw the lines and then kind of paint in them to, to get different colours, but I've actually done sort of different coloured lines there anyway, so uh, for that uh, particular uh, set of drawing at the moment, I'll just drop that down uh, and merge the layers uh, so that we can start painting on that. Uh, I've got a small set of brushes uh, I've been working on uh, using um, uh, a different set of brushes and working at a slightly different scale uh, so this uh, painting is ultimately going to be something that could be printed out at uh, A2 size which is uh, about 42 centimeters by just under 60 centimeters and uh, so for that I want a slightly different sort of canvas scale and, and just the way the, the brushes are working so I've been working on some of these to uh, make uh, slightly uh, more detailed uh, brushes so uh, I will sort of zoom in and start working in a lot more detail at, uh, at some point but for just now uh, I'll generally sort of work uh, a little bit uh, further out, zoomed out and just start locking in uh, and uh, as we said working from uh, using the, the colour palette that we uh, created um, and also some of the, the colours that are on the, the image because the this, this colour palette has come from this image but there's only the, the nine colours so we can obviously uh, pick up some more as well uh, if we want to.
I'm going to do a little bit of a, a wash to add some more darker areas and one of the tools I've been uh, gravitating towards for this is actually using some of the uh, sort of watery uh, ink tools with quite a lot of water um, just bring over the visual settings panel so that you can see what I've got set for this uh, and typically what uh, we need to do with this is first of all make sure the rewet is at zero because I don't want the paint running, I want the wash running over the paint. Um, I usually put the diffusion speed up quite a lot, um, not so keen on the edge darkening for this and uh, keep the absorbency uh, reasonably high. Um, for this sort of scale of image the drip size about two is good and uh, uh, 8 for the drip length, it gives quite nice long uh, runs. Um, because I've got a canvas texture uh, underneath this, um, I'm not too concerned about the, the granulation because actually the, the granulation sort of works uh, in competition with this kind of scale of uh, canvas texture. So I'm uh, not so quite so concerned about that. Um, and uh, that's what I'm going to use. So, with those settings, we can see what we can, what we get. So one of the things is if you've got it on mix then as you paint around then it will pick up the underlying colours for the, the washes, uh, particularly when you're sort of doing dark over light, I want to um, make sure it's just painting, not mixing that way, it will keep the colour that I'm putting down. see that uh, paint is sort of moving down slowly because this is a slightly higher resolution image the the colors sort of uh, run slightly more slowly there's a bit more kind of processing so I'm really uh, hammering my computer at the moment trying to uh, do this so one of the things we can do is every so often once it's uh, the paint's moved around and bled enough is actually just do a fast uh, dry on the image just click the fast dry um, and that way we can go back to uh, doing some other areas. You can see when it's a, a smaller area it will run slightly more quickly.
Okay, so once I've given that time to just sort of diffuse around uh, a little bit, um, hopefully what we can see is that's introduced um, quite a lot of sort of subtle marks and just the, the way it's kind of run around and interacted with the uh, the canvas green. I uh, brought the, kind of, again, the, the canvas green out uh, quite a bit um, and just introduced uh, a lot of uh, interesting sort of tonality. So we'll go back to painting and just uh, continue to paint into that and say uh, refine things. We'll still work generally sort of quite zoomed out at this stage just to uh, make sure we kind of concentrate on the uh, the sort of the, the image as a whole not get uh, too caught up in, in any particular uh, detail. One thing you'll notice in the photograph, because the, the light's coming in from the left hand side, it's really bright over here. Uh, and what that does is it draws your eye towards that, that kind of brightest point. So uh, in the painting, what I'm going to do is reverse that and make the, the light uh, brighter uh, in this area so that um, we get the sense of the, the sort of light hitting and the figure and the, the sort of most contrast in the painting uh, just around the, the sort of head and the shoulder. Um, rather than kind of at the, the opposite edge of the picture. So you'll see that I'm uh, darkening the colours as we work towards uh, this corner of the, the painting. So that's really one of the, the sort of general sort of themes that, that comes out with a, a lot of painting is the um, it, it's the adjustments and corrections that you make, the decisions that you make to to deliberately change things, uh, so you're not uh, ever uh, a slave to, to what is in front of you, whether it's a photo, whether it's drawing from life, um, you always have the, the ability to uh, make decisions and uh, change things that work for the painting and for the composition, because at, at the end of the day, you know, what people are going to see is is this final bit of work, not necessarily the, the photo, obviously you're getting to see exactly uh, what I'm working from at, at, at the moment. Um, but, you know, in general, people don't see that. What they want to see is the uh, the final image. So the, these uh, sort of artistic uh, decisions are, you know, what, what makes the image your own. Uh, you know, you're not trying to, to do an absolute pixel for pixel copy. Some people want to draw very realistically and you know that, that's absolutely fine. There's there's no problem with that. Um, but for the kind of work that I'm doing, I, I want to, to make something that's unique and kind of represents the, the sort of the, the way that I see things and the, the way that I uh, want to, to try and draw them and uh, and, and something that, that represents that. So I, I always feel uh, free to be able to, to change things, to move things around and to ultimately try and make something that is uh, its own uh, unique thing. You'll see I'm occasionally swapping between uh, different brushes here. I'm trying not to, to get too caught up in uh, lots of different sort of shapes and, and textures and things. And um, I deliberately just chose a small selection of brushes so I could really concentrate on the, the painting rather than getting too distracted with lots of uh, different brush choices. But uh, I do have a, a couple of things here that uh, allow me to put down some uh, 
slightly thicker marks, some slightly more sort of textured uh, bits of paint. Um, so that's what I've swapped to uh, at the moment, just to uh, help introduce uh, a little bit more uh, variety into to what I've got uh, down at the moment. So what I was doing there was just uh, introducing a little bit of randomness and, and just uh, adding some lines and scratches and scribbles and um, reminding myself about the, the sort of big shapes and structures of, of things um, and uh, still trying to, to keep things reasonably loose uh, at the moment. Um, Feeling like I'm just about getting to the point where I've got a, a kind of coherent overall picture. It's starting to show general sort of structure. Um, the, the sort of light and the shadow uh, generally sort of working reasonably well. Um, I think there's a, a few things that uh, maybe not sitting quite right in terms of tonally. The some of these bits of the uh, the flesh are sort of jumping out uh, a little bit too much so they're uh, distracting a little bit so I need to integrate those maybe knock them back uh, a little bit um, but we're getting towards the the point where we've got the we've got the canvas covered we've got the a uh, sort of loose a uh, sort of structural blocking um, and we can now uh, potentially start to think about moving this forward but uh, for now we'll just keep doing a, a little bit more just trying to keep it uh, nice and sort of loose and, and free uh, and see what we can do.
this point I think I'm going to uh, sort of refine the shapes a little bit more. Um, so we'll go back and just do a, another sketch layer this time with just a little bit more detail. Again, not uh, absolutely every everything drawn uh, to a nice crisp edge, but we just want to refine, refine the placement of certain things uh, and just continue to bring out uh, a little bit more detail without sort of losing too much of the nice sort of sketchy kind of painterly quality that we've got. So what I'll do is uh, bring in another layer and uh, just go back to, I'll switch these off, go back to the photo reference uh, and just do a little bit more sketching. So I've done a little bit of a sketch and this time I'm going to take that sketch layer, uh, I'm going to lock the transparency and then just go back to painting um, and that way I can uh, bring out some of the sketch lines with sort of light against dark and dark against light just so I can uh, highlight exactly where some of those lights are. Uh, sitting uh, and get a little bit more 
contrast with those. So because that layer is locked, uh, the paint is, is only painting on the line work uh, that I've just uh, drawn. So that means that I can uh, darken and lighten uh, just, just those marks and, and bring them out. So I'm happy with that. I can see enough contrast and that helps just uh, tighten up the, the drawing and the uh, placement uh, enough. So what I'll do is uh, just unlock that, uh, move that underneath the image and then just merge those layers together. So those lines are now uh, back in that image. Uh, and for uh, most of the time that I work on a painting, I just paint on one layer so that everything's mixing and uh, blending, uh, which is uh, obviously the uh, very much associated with the kind of traditional way to uh, to work with these things. general I'll try and stick to uh, darkening using washes to, to let the, uh, the colour run uh, as much as possible. Uh, this time I'm going to, to wet the layers so that the colours will sort of run and uh, bleed a little bit more. Um, but that way the, the dark uh, washes pick up the, the texture of the canvas and the texture of any uh, sort of paint marks that you've put down and, and help to, to just kind of reinforce that surface quality and the, the kind of textures that you've you've got there. Too worried if the, the colours run and drip over areas that, that should be lighter that just gives me uh, bits to, to repaint into uh, once I come back to it.
So I've had a chance to have a look at the painting again. I took a break from lunch. And when I came back and had a look at it, one of the things I decided was some of the texture is getting a little bit too thick and uh, bumpy. Now, uh, what we could do is uh, just sort of uh, erase some of that out. We could um, put, the, put the brush on the eraser and then, then just rub it out. But what we'll do is, as we do that, is that's just going to reveal the canvas uh, underneath them or to, to repaint it. So a uh, little trick that I'm going to use here is um, I've exported the image and what I did to export it was I put the pasta down and the two paper textures off and what we end up with is a, a flat image with uh, no texture uh, on it uh, at all. So I saved it as a JPEG and then what I did was uh, bring that back in underneath. So you can see with that image if we bring on uh, the impasto and the two textures uh, what you'll see is that that's not coming through in this because it is just completely a flat a jpeg image so what that allows me to do then is i can bring back the uh, heavily textured impasto version um, and now when i uh, delete uh, uh, erase some of that uh, what it'll do is it'll erase the texture and uh, knock it back a bit um, but leave the, the underlying image so uh, I'm not going back to just the, the, the sort of basic uh, canvas um, and that'll save me a little bit of repainting so that way I can uh, smooth the painting down a bit um, and then get ready to, to be able to, to paint back on top of it. Uh, once I'm happy with that, I'll just merge the two layers together so that uh, I don't have any gaps in this layer uh, and it's all just effectively one painting. So that's just a, a quick uh, shortcut uh, that I can use for that. Thing that'll do uh, and we'll just uh, drop that layer down um, and that's uh, reduced a little bit of the, uh, the impasto work. So what I'm going to concentrate on for the, the next hour uh, is um, actually just starting to uh, sort of zoom in a little bit and really just sort of refine some of the areas. Uh, looking at some of the colours, uh, some of the contrast and tone and just general shape. So it's really just about starting to, to work in and do a little bit of detail. Um, so for that, we're going to zoom into uh, something that's more uh, closely related to 100% uh, uh, physical scale, not one-to-one -one pixels. This is about this being uh, the scale uh, that it would be if this was an A2 canvas that I was working on so that I can um, make sort of slightly smaller brush strokes and, and focus in on it. But on the big monitor that I've got uh, in front of me, um, I've got the, the whole image so I can make sure I'm, I'm not getting too focused on a particular area. I can still look at the, the whole thing um, fairly effectively. So that's what we're going to focus on for the next week. while.
So at this point, uh, I've taken another quick break and just coming back, having a look at it. And uh, we're getting to the point where it, it's a balance between adding more details and refining it and trying to, to keep the overall image reasonably loose and um, able to, to sort of play against the, the textures. So there's a sort of backwards and forwards pull and push uh, just trying to add more details without um, overworking it and over refining it. Um, I think what we'll work on next is a, a little bit around the, the face uh, and then some of the edges uh, which are at the moment uh, very sort of drawn in and quite sharp. So we'll look a little bit around edge control and just refining some of the, the shapes and the positioning. Um, thickness of the arms a little bit too thick, that sort of thing. So um, just a continual process working around the drawing. Um, we'll bring in a little bit more drawing just to pick out some of the uh, more interesting sort of shapes and just feel make it feel a bit more refined. Um, but that's the, the plan, so we'll carry on. So I think we're just about to call that one a day. Um, at the end there I've just added in a few special effects, a couple of extra lines and random shapes and uh, things that uh, I painted into and added some of the, the colours from the painting just to help um, break up the image and play between the kind of realism and the abstract sort of sense of the image. So I could try to do a lot more with this but uh, I think I'm going to I uh, call this one uh, done for just now. So uh, I hope you found that uh, interesting. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you could like, uh, subscribe, and uh, if you get any thoughts, uh, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know what you're interested in, what you'd like to, to see next, uh, and I'll see if I can I produce some videos uh, for you. 
So thank you very much again and uh, we'll see you again soon.